In this video, I'm going to give an update on the positions I'm in, the positions I'm holding, the positions I'm adding. These are swing trade opportunities with upcoming catalysts. Most of them are not long term holds, but I do believe some of these have the potential to make me some good money in the short to medium term. I use risk management. I take profit on the way up. That's just how I do it on this channel. I'm going to go over everything I'm looking at going into this week, going into the next couple of weeks. It's going to be a big video. And yes, these are swing trade opportunities. These are not long term holds. You know, ACHL, PTPI, PHIO. PHIO is one that I'm adding. I'm looking to add more of. I'm in. I'm holding BBAI, some AI plays. And I'm going to go over all of that, all of that information that you guys really want to see. But I do want to mention uh, a long term, a true long term hold that I'm not selling for years to come. Uh, I just want to mention this again and again ticker chat the generative AI ETF. I think it's important for me to mention this in these videos. I might start mentioning this every video that I'm holding chat long term because I strongly believe in the future potential of artificial intelligence stocks. And by me being in chat, I'm in NVIDIA, I'm in Microsoft, Meta, Google, Adobe, CRM, AMD, Amazon, SMCI, Marvel, IBM, Aina, uh, some Hong Kong, some Chinese long term artificial intelligence hold. So this is one this is my number one long term hold besides, of course, you know, VOO, my you know, general stock market ETF. But in terms of growth, I'm a long term and ticker chat for generative AI. I think it has a lot of long term growth. It's an actively managed ETF. I'm in that for the long run. Now, let's hop into the tickers. I'm in. I'm buying penny stocks. I am swing trading for potentially big returns. And guys, if you do want to hop in the private discord to get alerts like this, started a position in ACHL at $1.09 and plan to add more where that was on 220. That's currently up right now from, you know, that date, February 20th. That's up about already about 30%. So there is a link at the top pin comment to hop in the private discord. I know a lot of people ask me, Moon, why don't you just give everybody the play at the same time on the channel, on the Discord, on Twitter, whatever it may be? Well, the stock market, it's fast moving. It's impossible for me to upload sometimes exactly when I get in a position, but it's very possible for me to do that in the Discord, which is linked in the top pin comment. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just sharing my personal trade ideas, what I'm personally taking. If you guys decide to take these you know, you have the potential to lose money in the stock market. It's very risky. But here I am on this channel sharing my journey with you all. Now, you know, just like this, ticker ACHL and PHIO were two that I was talking about that I was looking to get in very soon for a swing. Both of these have rose up 20, 30%. So definitely, definitely go ahead, hop in the private discord for my personal buy alerts. I also have my sell alerts. I, you know, I have my day trades, uh, everything within the private discord that you guys need to know is over there in the discord. Now, let's get into ticker BDRX first, because, you know, this is one that I was talking about. And you may have noticed it was not, you know, in my portfolio right now for, for swing trades. And that is because I did sell out of my BDRX position. So what ended up happening for BDRX is they posted news that they announced positive top line phase one clinical trial results. And that, you know, ended up giving us a nice 30, 40% pop. So from $1.54, that was about, you know, 42% pop on BDRX there. I was able to take some profit within that pop. Now, I do want to talk about BDRX because I am potentially thinking about getting back in this one. And I do kind of want to get it lower. It did end up dipping on Friday all the way down to $1.30. So they posted that news on Friday. It popped pre-market. It went red. People probably took profits. A lot of people were waiting for that pop to take profit. So it did end up selling off, which, you know, I'm really not surprised about. You know, when, when there's news that a lot of people are waiting for, they finally get the pop. They want to take profit. It That's how it goes. I mean, that's just how it goes with these penny stocks, you know. We know we're not, hold, you know, a lot of people know they're not holding them long term. I know I'm not holding it long term. So when I see that green, I don't get too greedy. I really just decide to take that green. Um, this dip down to a dollar thirties may prove to be good. I didn't get in on that. I may, you know, if I if I if I was more focused on it and I had a buy order, a bid order, and I may have bought into that. I would like to see this get back down to a dollar thirties, even a dollar twenties potentially. Um, but we'll see where it consolidates. And the reason I may end up getting back into this, I'm not in yet, 
I'll see what happens with the price action. If it gives me a good price that I like, I'll probably go ahead and get back in because, you know, we know that they have the shareholder letter where in quarter one, they have a bunch of different trials that they're going to put out and they have put out some already. They put out two of these trials now in that one PR. Um, we can go to the PR and we can see that they put out the update on MTX 110, which is uh, right here. Boom, that's checked off. And then they put out an update on Telemadone. So you can see an update on Telemadone. The Telemadone update actually wasn't that great because they got results that were inconclusive and they did not correlate with the previous results. So that, you know, was actually a piece of not so good news in the PR. So they had positive results and they had a bit of, I wouldn't say negative results, but not so good results for ticker BDRX. Okay. But they still have not put out the readout of Vivo preclinical data for MTD 217. And remember, this is due by quarter one. Quarter one ends March 31st. So they still have about a month left to put out potentially MTD 217 preclinical data, which is giving me, you know, a reason to potentially get back in BDRX. Um, if we go over here to Weeble, you know, what I may end up doing for, tick, so, for something like BDRX is, you know, putting in, you know, an order for, you know, 500 shares at, you know, for 500 shares at, you know, $1.40, 500 shares at $1.30, 500 shares at $1.20, seeing if they get filled and then kind of ride it out for that potential data. So I am going to consider getting back in BDRX. I'm not in yet. I did take profit on that pop. That's how it is with BDRX. The short interest on this one is apparently 25%, which I, I think is still inaccurate on Ortex. They're claiming the free float is 1.87 million when it's really 3.5 million. So the, the data, uh, short interest data is still inaccurate there on Ortex for BDRX, but they still do have that catalyst coming up. So that's how it is for BDRX right now. So ACHL, I'm really, you know, I, I try not to get too excited about stocks, about penny stocks, because anything can happen, you know, it's always good to not get greedy and take your green, especially even if you're up 10, 20%, taking a little bit off the table, you know, every now and again, I, I get a little bit more risky. I like to hold for catalyst sometimes. I like to get the big money out of the play. If I see a big money potential out of the play, and I still do see that out of ticker ACHL, even from the levels we're at right now, they have $113 million in cash. They don't need to dilute. Does that mean they won't? Guaranteed? No, they, they still might. I mean, they have a shelf for $13 million. Although, if they do have good data coming up, a smart CEO, a smart company would put that data out before diluting. But if they have bad data, maybe they want to dilute. But right now, they have a ton of cash. I don't see why they would dilute on their shareholders right now. It doesn't make any sense for them to, to slam an offering or something like that right now. Uh, they have 50, it's a $56 million market cap. Like I said, 113 million cash. There is a catalyst this week for ACHL, February 29th, 2024. Uh, this is an AI powered biotech stock and they have a catalyst February 29th. It doesn't say in this PR if they're going to present data at that meeting on February 29th this week on Thursday this week, but we do know that they have phase one to a data to be presented in quarter one of 2024 and phase one two data to be presented in quarter one 2024 which ends march 31st so there's two upcoming sets of data for achl they have a ton of cash i mean the chart looks amazing on this one right now you you know this is on a solid uptrend it closed over a dollar 30 which was a strong level of resistance for me and now i do believe actually let's flip over to the chart over here uh, they they closed over $1.30. I do think we have room to $1.60. There is some resistance there. If we get over $1.60 and hold over that for a daily candle, I think we could potentially get up to $2 per share. They have data coming up. If the data is good, it could pop up, you know, even over $2 in my opinion. If the data is bad, it could really drop tremendously. So that's the risk here with ACHL. If they do report bad data, you could see this even drop under a dollar to like 60 cents. But I'm a risk taker. I'm probably going to risk it and hold through to the data. Uh, I, if it starts really, really running up towards this February 29th conference, I'll, I'll probably take some off. So I'll probably sell a little bit, sell a little bit to secure some profits and then hold a good chunk 
for the data. That's just how I'm playing it, guys. You guys do whatever you want to do. You know, remember, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just simply sharing what I'm doing. And I really like ACHL with the upcoming data, with the upcoming uh, conference this week and the cash position they have. There's no short interest. I mean, there's hardly any short interest. I don't want to say there's no. It's at 0.13%. Uh, it has increased a little bit, just, but it's only point. It's not even a percent of short interest. Not even a percent of the free float is shorted on ticker ACHL, meaning shorts aren't really playing around with this one. They don't really want to hop in a stock before they're about to report data because they could lose a significant amount of money. So I really like ACHL. You know, I'm in this one for 17,000, you know, 12,500 uh, 12, shares. So that's what I'm looking at for a ticker ACHL. And I'm really liking this play now. Ticker PHIO. So I gave this to my Discord a week ago, about, about a week ago. Said, I'm looking to add this one. You know, ACHL, PHIO, I'm looking to add this one. The Discord always gets these alerts. So definitely, there's a link in the top and comment. Hop in the Discord if you want the stocks I'm in or looking to get in, you know, early as possible. I try to put them out there, let you guys know what I'm looking at, what, what I'm looking to get in, what catalysts are coming up. I love these biotech low flow plays with some good cash on hand and with, with some data to be presented in the near future. I am in PHIO for 5,000 shares. I would say that's not even my full position yet. I, w I really wanted to add this one lower, but it hasn't really dropped and it's looking strong right now. So I may just say, you know what, let me just put in some more, even at these prices it's at right now. I'll tell you why in a, sec in a second, but if we look at the chart here, you know, that 50 cents is, uh, is the bottom here i don't i don't expect to take it down to 50 cents although anything is possible i've right now at this current point don't ex don't really you know wouldn't really expect to see that right now before the preclinical data that's still um you know i may look to, you know we have good support here at around 75 cents so if we put that 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 line that support line there at 75 cents I'm going to probably look to get in more shares in the 70 cents range for ticker PHIO. Of course, if this drops to 60s again, I would be looking to load up real good on this one. Definitely is possible. I think it could happen, although it is looking strong. I may give in and add an even larger position at these levels, but overall, I think it's going to go higher from here. PHIO is at a $3.8 million market cap, a $4.57 million float. They have 6.7 million cash on hand, 7.2 months of cash on hand, plenty of time. They do have some warrants at a dollar eight. So if it gets up to that dollar eight level, there might be some resistance or some a little bit of selling pressure due to those warrants being able to be exercised at those level. Warrants, you know, the exercise price of the warrants is basically, you know, the the price that, you know, it says it right here. The price the warrant holder must pay to receive a share per, per warrant. The higher the current stock price relative to the exercise price the more likely it is that they will be exercised resulting in dilution. So right now the current price is 82 cents. They're not going to really be, they, they can't exercise those warrants right now. Although if the price shoots up to a dollar 20, then, you know, they may decide to exercise those warrants resulting in some dilution for ticker PHIO. So I'd really like to get this one well under a dollar, well under that a dollar eight level. So it gives me some, some nice room to get a nice gain out of this one before they can even start diluting. And I believe that's all the dilution they can do right now. They have done a lot in the past, but right now that was able to give them some good cash, 6.7 million cash right now to go ahead and potentially complete this preclinical data that's due to be presented at an immunotherapy of cancer conference on March 21st, 2021. So in about under a month right now, they're going to go to a, a cancer conference and present their preclinical data for this drug. And I'm going to pronounce this wrong. I'm not, I'm, I shouldn't even try, but Intacil, Intacil, that drug, they're going to present it, uh, their data for that. And, you know, a stock like this uh, at a $3.8 million market cap, uh, you could see a run up leading up to that conference for sure like you know it gives a reason for people to buy the stock you know they see that there's data coming up it's gonna it's probably gonna cause some buying pressure leading up to that conference so even before they put out the data there's a chance you could see you know a run-up of the stock price in my opinion leading up to that conference although if they do report positive data 
you know, it could obviously shoot up. But as we get closer to that date, I'll, you know, give updates, talk about what's going on. I'm in this one for not a full position yet, although I wish I was. I just wasn't able to really, you know, capture one because this thing started really moving up here. Uh, I was hoping for a dip, you know, and I didn't really get much of a dip at all. Um, but I still like PHIO. I think it's a really good play. I think it's one of the best ones, you know, upcoming here with a nice, nice biotech catalyst. So keep an eye on ticker PHIO. Right now, the short interest is only 0.3%. So not a lot of shorts are really messing with it right now. Now, moving on to PTPI, of course, guys, heavy 15,000 shares on ticker PTPI still in this play. Uh, it actually was running up a little bit. I mean, this one has been going up, you know, slowly, 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 which is what we want to see. It's good to see that catalysts are still about a month out. But yeah, this was up from, you know, about 10 per, you know, 9.4 percent from, uh, you know, that dollar 60 level, you know, it hit a dollar 75 pre-market. And uh, PTPI, of course, we know that they have two upcoming FDA meetings. You know, I'm still in this one full two upcoming FDA meetings, you know, with the FDA, one on March 26th, and then a listen only meeting on March 11th. Love that. And then, you know, the short interest on this one is about 6% right now. And then they also have the AI license agreement with a multi billion dollar software provider. So they said they're going to be releasing details on the partner, who it is, what the partnership is going to look like. And I think that could be a great catalyst. So I still, I'm still loving PTPI, guys. And I did want to mention that PTPI, their, their FDA meeting is for OTC approval for Stendra. Stendra is already FDA approved. And to get OTC approval is over-the-counter medicine, which means medicine that you can buy without a prescription, which means if they get OTC approval, then there could be big time money in that drug that they're selling over the counter because it's just a lot more accessible for people to buy. So I like PTPI. This guy Calvin over here has been dropping some wild DD. It's all speculation. I'm not saying I endorse his DD or agree with it all. I'm just saying he's posting some speculation. It most likely isn't even going to end up playing out like this, like he's saying. But it's interesting. If you want to check him out, Calvin, he's posting some DD. Um, regardless, it's still not a long-term hold for me, although I may hold some shares for a little bit longer. But if it does run up you know, on news or just leading up to news, then I'll be looking to take profits, of course, even on PTPI, even though I love it. So I, I'm still holding that one. Uh, C3 AI. Uh, they um, basically, you know, this is just a stock that is not a great AI company. I don't look at C3 AI as a long-term hold, hold at all, but there is some upcoming, you know, catalysts for C3 AI where they're going to be uh, uh, putting out their earnings on February 28th. And the overall sentiment behind these earnings is bearish. So a lot of people think that these earnings are going to be bad and the stock price could drop for C3AI. And that's definitely possible. I mean, if you want to play the downside, if you want to play puts on C3AI, go for it. If you think it's going to be bad, go for it. I think it's possible. I think it could be bad. Um, there's definitely a good chance because they've been switching up their business model, blah, blah, blah. But if the earnings are good for C3AI, the upside potential in the short term would be ridiculous. It could squeeze out a little bit. So it's going to be really interesting on February 28th, which is Wednesday this week. Keep an eye on these earnings. You can play the upside. You can play the downside. It's probably more likely of bat, of you know not so great earnings for C3A. To be honest, probably more likely. It's probably more likely it's not going to be great earnings. But if they are really good earnings and they've been doing well, then that squeeze potential will get serious because the short interest on this one is literally out of hand and it could be for a good reason there you know there could be a good reason why the short interest is at 36 percent but if they do report good earnings those shorts could really get messed up and they also do have a generative ai conference on march 5th to the 7th so it's going to be interesting for c3ai it could play out either way i do have this position here 500 shares you know we'll see what happens on the earnings um, 
a BBAI. I'm still in it. I'm hoping for a PR. I'm basically break even on this trade right now. Uh, I'm looking for a PR about their, their upcoming merger. We may get it. We may not. I'm thinking about getting out soon of BBAI. I may get out soon. I may hold it for a potential pop. My stop loss is still a dollar seventy-eight. So if it gets under a dollar seventy-eight, I'll probably just go ahead and get out of the position and then move on. Load up like load up some PHIO. Move that BBA to P PHIO. I may end up moving that C3AI to PHIO and AOV. This was a position I'm still up on, and I took profit on the way up. I'm still holding the rest of my shares for a, a, a PR. So this is what I'm looking at for my swing trades. Drop a like on this video if you did enjoy this content. Hop in the private Discord. That's it for me. Peace.